Hello, welcome back to Paul Outdoors. Thank you for joining me, I hope that you're well. It's Sunday the 25th of February and it is absolutely freezing here in the UK at the moment. We're being warned of a Siberian blast coming in from the east, the beast from the east. The newspapers are billing it as. Britain is going to be terrorised by, uh, by cold weather. The usual story. So uh, I'm all uh, wrapped up. And the more I move, the warmer I get. I'm on route to uh, do an eight mile walk. I've got 15 kilos on my back, just for conditioning purposes. But the main thrust of the video isn't about the walk, it's about uh, what I'm going to uh, see on my way really. And that is a, uh, about 10 years ago, I planted around about a dozen oak trees. I grew from acorns collected from some of the large oak trees in this area, planted those on and I'm um, just going to see how they're doing and film it on video for posterity really and the video has been prompted, inspired by Sam and Wilmer of Sam's Outdoor Life. Sam recently um, did a wonderful giveaway of pine cones. He um, was rather upset by the unnecessary felling of a beautiful pine tree near where he lives and he couldn't save the, uh, the pine tree but he did the next best thing and um, managed to collect a load of the cones and has generously given them away for people to grow on and plant so hopefully the uh, demise of that pine tree will not be in vain so thanks for the inspiration Sam and well done on that uh, wonderful gesture I'm also going to stop off for the obligatory brew with my Trangia burner. Thank you, Mike, again. I keep saying that. And I'm going to use a lightweight pot stand, three aluminium tent pegs, weighing no more than 30 grams. I know it's been done before. It's not you, new and un unique, this idea. But I've never done it before, so I'm going to give it a go, see if it works. And that'll uh, hopefully sustain me on my eight mile hike so uh, we'll see how that works and at the end of the video I'm going to do um, a shout out for three cracking channels so stay tuned for that. Now on the edge of the woodland and we can see in the uh, centre of the screen one of the oak trees that I planted 10 years ago the uh, parent tree is about 30 meters to the left and I estimate that this tree is probably between 12 and 14 feet tall possibly a little bit taller I'm six feet tall so I'm just going to go up and uh, have a look at the tree and you'll be able to see the uh, the height comparison Again in the centre of the screen on the edge of the woodland you see tree number two, probably about the same size, growing really really well and we have the parent tree to the left, beautiful specimen and it's sobering to think that left to their own devices these, uh, these ten year old trees will grow up into big, healthy, magnificent oak trees and will emulate their uh, their parents. That's the hope anyway. And here we see a third oak tree which was planted at the same time as the two others that I've just uh, just shown you. And this one did receive some initial rabbit and squirrel damage which sort of um, set it back quite a lot in comparison uh, to the others but it's it's still a strong grower it's going to survive and I'll just show you how tall it is by comparison so I'm uh, I'm six feet tall so this one is just just under six feet now I'm very strong got a good root structure so that one um, that one I think is also going to survive so again Less than half the height of the other two, but um, here for the duration, I hope. 
So in the shot now we have three of the um, the eight-year-old trees that I that I planted as, as a group together, and the parent tree um, sort of looming uh, over all the others in the background there. And we also have a deer and badger track, sort of bisecting the grassland and going through these trees which I think is why these are stunted in comparison to the others that are about 14 feet tall now that's that's sort of um, the logic that tells me that these were more easily accessible to the deer and, and the rabbits so have been grazed upon whereas the taller trees that have grown up through the uh, bramble thickets have, um, have sort of benefited from that protection so I'm just going to uh, walk up to these three trees and I'll just show you how tall they are in comparison. And all of the trees were originally protected and staked, um, protected with rabbit guards. There's an example of one here that you can see, hopefully, or well, the remnants of, uh, of the rabbit guard, which I'll, uh, I'll probably remove and take off at some point soon. And there's another view. The tree here this one is the, the last of the three I've just shown you, which is uh, probably about 10 feet tall. And the one beyond it is, uh, is the second tree I showed you, which is closer to uh, 14 feet tall. We have another one there, which is doing really, really well, which um, Again, is probably the, the tallest, I would say. That, that one's approaching 15, 16 feet tall. Now, these oaks here are, uh, are natural. That is, they haven't been planted to my knowledge. And they are... They are growing on nicely. Some are single trunk, some are multi-trunked. So again, that one to the left may well have been predated and as a result, a sent up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trunk, seven uh, stems from the, from the base. And this one here, which is quite a tall tree is it isn't one I planted, and you just see the moon over the top of it. So, by planting the trees I've planted, I'm just giving nature a helping hand, really. It's also nice to uh, to feel that um, you know we're making a positive impact on the landscape, and all the benefits that these trees are going to uh, provide. Now the bowl of this oak tree, the base of it, is, uh, is immense, <laughs> it really is magnificent. As you can see the branches sort of start to uh, spread out from quite a low height and just there is where the barn owls um, enter and exit the, uh, the tree quite often, if I'm, co if I'm quiet enough. I can creep around and the, the pair of them will just be uh, sat there together in the sun, just um, eyes shut, just passing time, waiting for dusk. And uh, here we have a couple of um, barn owl pellets which have been uh, ejected from the oak tree above. You can see various bones, rodent bones, vole bones in there. So that pellet would have been uh, coughed out as the, uh, the barn owl has digested its meal. Beautiful birds. 
I do feel sorry for all uh, its victims, but um, that is nature. I've just swung the camera around now to my right, and we have this um, this fine specimen, a prime example of uh, the wonderful architecture of nature, and the silhouette of the branches of this tree always uh, remind me of the uh, arteries of the lungs. An obvious parallel. Beautiful. And as we uh, we look at the greater landscape, we have oak trees dotted around where once they would have been um, more common. So we need to look after our veteran trees. And Spiker Pose, our Dutch friend, posted a video. I think it was uh, a few days ago where. He was involved in the felling of um, diseased beech trees in a part of the land where he lives and uh, there was no real knowledge as to why those trees had died back but they had to come down for health and safety reasons and it's a real cry and shame. So um, we need to think more about planting more trees because um, when these beauties have got are gone we need more to uh, to take their place and take their crown. Okay, it's uh, it's brew time. Hopefully, you can hear me. There's a tractor down in the uh, field below, and it's windy and cold. So I've got my uh, foam pad, which I carry to sit on and lie on off the dirt, that's the idea anyway. I've just taken the gloves off and it is absolutely freezing. <laughs> so I'm going to set the transier up now and uh, we can get a, get a brew on with uh, the temp peg pot stand, the windshield and see how we go. That's the plan anyway. Try and keep things uh, simple. So I've moved the camera now so you can actually see the burner enclosed uh, by the, um, the windshield. I may need to close the gap there as well if uh, the wind gets really bad, but it is very, very breezy today. Now, the meth is cold, it's a cold day, it's below freezing today, so what I'm going to do is put a little bit of toilet paper into the burner to act as a wick to help light this because it uh, can be a bit temperamental when it's uh, very cold. So toilet paper's in the, uh, in the fuel, in the meths. I'm just going to light, light it now and that should help it to... Uh, to ignite and um, get going. Now, I'm not sure about the uh, durability of these aluminium um, tent stakes over time and whether the metal will be um, undermined by the by the heat using them uh, in this way, but only only time will tell. So we'll leave that now for um, a few minutes and see how. Uh, how we get on but it is very very cold very cold it's bitter cold in fact so uh mess is notoriously um unpredictable when it's um, around about freezing so it'll be interesting to see how how we go well i'm really pleased with the stability of the three um aluminium uh temp pegs the um, bottom of the pot is about a inch above the top of the burner which is ideal I could probably push those pegs in a little bit more the windshield is doing a decent job but it is very windy and the flame is being affected um, but we do have bubbles in the pot so we're getting there and as I said before meths is notoriously unpredictable at low temperatures but uh, I think this is going to work this could be a contender for my uh, lightweight backpacking and hiking cook set. I do have a cross stand 
on the way to me that will sit on top of the transier burner which will sort of negate the need for the temp pegs or any type of pot stand apart from that but we'll need a, uh, a robust windshield and this, this one is good fairly lightweight so yeah so far so good but as you can see the uh, the flame is still affected quite a lot by the by the wind which is uh, not surprising well the pots rattling steam is coming up through the vent holes and we have bubbles way hey, hey. Took about ooh, six minutes, I reckon. But uh, we're in no hurry, even though it's brassic. So, time for coffee. health. Oh that's good. Well I finished my much needed brew, I've packed away and I'm about to uh, get on the move again because it is blinking cold. <laughs> I keep saying it but it, it really really is and the longer I'm sort of stood around or stationary not doing a lot in this woodland the colder I'm getting so I'm going to get on the move but before I do I want to give three shout outs to three great YouTube channels the first being Sam of Sam's Outdoor Life Sam and Wilma hope you're both well and thank you for the inspiration for uh, me getting out today as a part of the greater walk filming in the oak trees thanks for that Sam so please go along and have a look at Sam's channel Sam's Outdoor Life Sam is based near Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire and uh, very interesting chap, um, somebody who I like to think is on the same wavelength as me which is why I, uh, I like his channel and his videos so much. In the same vein, please go and have a look at uh, Simon's channel, Simon is at Rialabran, R-H-I-A-L-O-B-R-A-N, Rialabran, which I believe is Cornish for Lord of the Crows or Royal Raven please correct me Simon if I'm wrong on that one but Simon is a proud Cornishman based in Cornwall in the southwest of England and his channel predominantly features Dartmoor and Simon's love of the moor um, most of Simon's videos are backed by wonderful wonderfully evocative music uh, which I love so please go and uh, visit Simon's channel and, and subscribe third channel is Jim Holden H-O-L-D-E-N Jim is based in the northwest of England I believe and Jim is a solo wild camper and Jim's channel features his uh, love of the great outdoors nature his um, climbing uh, English and Welsh peaks and many of those are featured I'm not sure whether he's done any of the, any of the Scottish peaks but um, I'm sure if he hasn't he's he's going to in the future no pressure Jim so Jim a lovely guy great channel great videos please go and visit Jim's channel and subscribe as always thank you very much for your support for watching please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it leave a comment or question below and if you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing and i look forward to seeing you in the next one thank you